Hey, I'm your host, Sydney B, and thanks for tuning in to the Beehive on the Social Bee Show. We're kicking the show off with a safe space for minority students. Later, we'll be discussing how beauty kills during Tea and Honey. And of course, after that, you know we'll be playing some games. But before we can get into today's topic, let's cover some hot topics on this thing. A school's newspaper is creating a safe space for minority students. California's Claremont McKenna College announced that they would be setting aside some of its usual column pieces in the school's new newspaper to give people of color an unfiltered voice in the media. The student government funded newspaper is featuring this new safe spaces fad will reflect the voices of many progressive college activists who feel mainstream media is misguided in representing people of color or even who just feel compelled to speak out and be heard. Although all content will be indeed proof read, the newspaper has vowed to not edit their voice or their content. Brown University will spend $100 million to improve race relations. Over the next decade, the university plans to address diversity and racism on the campus by spending $100 million to create a just and inclusive campus community, including ways to increase Brown's racial and ethnic diversity and add race and ethnicity to teaching and research topics. Brown's president, Christina Paxson, released a 19-page draft action plan and thanks students who have called attention to the injustice issues in Ivy League schools. An Oklahoma Wesleyan University president says he's fed up with our generation's narcissism. President Dr. Everett Piper wrote a letter detailing how our culture has taught kids to be self-absorbed and narcissistic. President Piper says that he is fed up with students who cry victim when their views and opinions are challenged. Piper defines the feeling of comfort when confronted with wrongdoings as conscience. He says that his school believes that the content of your character is more important than the color of your skin. President Piper also says that this is not a daycare, but rather a university. So snaps to you, Piper. And before we can wrap up things on the sting, you know we must talk about the buzzkill of the day. So, how ugly do you really need to be to win Mr. Ugly? Zimbabwe's fourth annual Mr. Ugly has left a few contestants of the competition feuding over who's the ugliest of them all. 42-year-old Myson Sire is reigning champion of this year's competition for his numerous missing front teeth and twisted facial expressions. But he's being accused of cheating. According to former champion William Massanu, Siri is not naturally ugly, ladies and gentlemen. Instead, he is only ugly when he opens his mouth. So therefore, he is cheating. Siri dismissed the critics as sore losers, of course, and proudly pocketed his $500 in winning. But let's stop here. Why are we really arguing over who's the ugliest of them all? Like, I, I think there's a bigger picture to that. Like, that's what we need to be talking about. Not who's the ugliest, but maybe like who's the cutest and then why do you really want to win Mr. Ugly you know I kind of think that's like, that's like a blow to your own self-esteem but hey that's just me that's just my opinion but we have to take a very quick break but when we return we'll be how do you say it killing beauty for tea and honey stay tuned Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. Here to talk more about how beauty kills is Tracy Burton, Chelsea Phillips, Daniel Hamilton, and Matthew Bracey. Welcome to the Beehive. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. <laughs> Y'all looking bashful now. Don't get bashful on me. Oh, I'm not bashful. Okay, I have to make sure. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> let's kick it off. How do you define beauty? Whoever wants to chime in. Okay, let me go. <laughs> so, I feel like it's like, you know how people say it's, it's what's on the inside that counts? I don't think that's true. I think it's if you look good, if you think you look good on the outside, then that's how you feel inside. But, like, if you walking around and you not looking how you, you know, when you got your hair and your nails and stuff, like, you ain't, you ain't on the inside. Day. No. 
you can't be beautiful on the inside and be right. I mean, just you having can, a basic but, day on the outside. But I mean, if the, if you like, you have to be confident within yourself. Okay, you know? that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Basically, and I, to piggyback off of that, I think beauty definitely has to stem from the inside out. But to say that inner beauty is the most important thing, but that doesn't mean because I'm beautiful on the inside, I need to come out the house looking a mess. It is about self care, but the beauty definitely has to stem from the inside first. Okay, okay. Gentlemen, anything? I don't know. For me, beauty is what's ever you know, captivating or what's stimulating to you. So, like, it doesn't have to be anything that's physical necessarily. It can be something spiritual <laughs> or something emotional. Like, um, I know, uh, <clears throat> for me, I'm extimulated or attracted mostly to someone who has mental beauty, someone who is more inquisitive, like Tamara. Like, that's attractive to me. That is beautiful. That is, that is beautiful. Okay. <laughs> so, a moment of honesty so nice. from everyone. <laughs> Would you date uh-huh. anyone who is not conventionally attractive? When you say conventionally, what do you mean? That meets the standards, the standards that are already set out by the world. By the world. Gotcha. Yes. Would you date someone who is not conventionally beautiful? Yes. Why? Why? Yeah. Well, the main thing I think is it, it depends on what you're attracted to. So if I see somebody and it's the way they have their hair. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm attracted to it, I want to talk to that person. Okay. So when it comes to things like dating, um, I think it all comes down to what you're attracted to. And as long as um, it goes back to that confidence, as long as you're confident um, in knowing that that's what you're attracted to, then I don't see a problem in pursuing it. So I'm kind of hearing the word confidence is being thrown out the most. And you know, in my next question, it is what makes one person more beautiful than the other? And, you know, is it that matter of confidence, as you two say? You know, what is it that really makes one person more beautiful than the next? I was thinking about that today, and I was thinking about how it's so sad that girls are taught to compete with each other more than we're taught to love each other and, first of all, love ourselves. So me looking at you and saying, Sydney, you're a beautiful woman, or you're a beautiful woman doesn't take away the fact that I'm beautiful and I feel beautiful. And me looking at you or looking out into the world, I can say Beyonce is beautiful, but that doesn't mean she's the standard of beauty. Gotcha. It's, it's no standard. Whoever you are, that makes you beautiful. Mm-hmm. I think, I like to think about it like um, we're all like puzzle pieces. Okay. Um, and so no one person is more beautiful than another person. Really, it's I think that you're the most beautiful because you have these qualities that go I'm attracted to. Exactly. <laughs> these qualities that go with this puzzle. That's most fitting. So what are the drawbacks? You know, what are the drawbacks of being, you know, of beauty? Being beautiful. What, like, what are, like, those things that's, like... The standards. The fact that we get it's shoved down our throats from the time we grow up. So that this is beautiful. If you don't look like Nicki Minaj, if you don't look like Caitlyn Jenner, you know, if you don't look like Kim Kardashian, mm-hmm. then you're not beautiful. Those are the drawbacks. It's what the world tells us that we should be. I think an important drawback will be having all the exterior features and not having lined up with or match the interior features. So, like, if you look good, if you look um, attractive, but your personality is in there, or, you know, your ambition is in there, or your self-esteem is in there, like, those can be drawbacks that can take away from your exterior beauty for me. And I think that's what's important when we all say self, like, being, to recognize the beauty in yourself. Like, how are you, you know, towards other people? Regardless of if, you know, you look, got makeup on, you know, your hair is done, or if you wear a nice outfit or whatever. Like, how are you treating others? Because I think that stands out, you know, on top of everything. So what do you think about the proverb, beauty is in the eye of the beholder? I think that's something that's definitely true. <laughs> I mean, it's always been true for a long time. I don't look at myself that as the type of person that um, dates conventional beauty. Um, so yeah, I definitely have to agree with the fact that beauty is in the eye of the beholder because you know, whoever I find attractive is beautiful to me, regardless of what the world can see. Okay. You know, make so is there any one gender culture or even ethnicity who worries more about beauty than the other mm, that's a hard question. 
that's a hard one to attack. I think it goes this way. If we look at America, if it isn't white, then it isn't right. And if we if we look out into our world and the less opportunities, well, I'm saying the less opportunities that are available for people of color to have these roles to showcase beauty are less. And then we see foreigns that are put on a pedestal. So I think minorities have it more difficult with displaying the difference in our beauty. I see some lip biting over okay. here. I see <laughs> some. I just, I, just, I just want to touch. Okay. So like you said, <laughs> I you said white, white is right. That's what no, no, no. I was saying that's what it's like in the media, not what. See, I, I don't think that because no offense, mm -hmm. but like to me, the white people go and they get tans and they get the injections and they get all this stuff, and we get this nice, long, beautiful hair. Thank you. I feel like it's just like we all right here and it's like they got stuff we want and we got stuff they want. So I don't think it's like... I think what Tracy... But then that is right. That is no, right. No, I'm not though, saying that, that's um, how I feel. I'm saying... I know. I'm just saying like I... um The part where you said like they... They do have the upper hand. I'm just saying. I think. Media. I think. Yeah. I think they do. Okay, I think so what Tracy is trying to say is like African, African American women might have a harder time having their beauty accepted. Um, uh, for a quick example, um, uh, like you might be an African American going up for a role in a play, but your features might hold you back. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean that you're not beautiful or you know your beauty isn't as beautiful as the next race or culture. It's just that having that beauty be accepted and looked at as something that is um, beautiful uh, is probably harder for that particular race. Viola Davis said it best. It's just the lack of opportunity mm -hmm. to be showcased in that manner. I don't know. I think we have to look at not comparing ourselves so much to other races because we're all, you know, kind of different. Have different features, you know, cultures, upbringings, and standards of beauty for our own particular race. So we kind of have to make sure that we don't judge ourselves or validate ourselves off something. <laughs> Most definitely. And, you know, we're, we're talking so much about what lies on the outside of us and, you know, what's only skin deep. So let's talk a little bit about inner beauty. Why is it so important? Mm -hmm. I think that, um, let's say you have, like, a, a blank field and you have, like, a man and then you got a bunch of women. I'm just saying that because, like, a bunch I'm of women. 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 <laughs> yeah, you know, we Anyways, <laughs> so you got a man and you got a, a bunch of females. Um, instantly, I'm going to be attracted to the ones that I see physically that are most attractive to me. And that's going to cause me to go talk to, like, those females. But the female that sticks is the one that I'm attached to on, like, the emotional side and the intellect side. All the things on the, in on the inside, um, all of her... In interior beauty um, is, is sort of like what keeps the glue between us, you know? And so I think uh, that inner beauty is just as important as exterior beauty, even though our media um, sort of blows away from that. It's like betrays it, vice versa. And what, you know, what traits in inner beauty? I, feel, I think for me personally, if you can make me laugh, okay, and you like can to have giggle. a good time, and we chilling. You can stick, okay? <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to sound. I'm wanna. just saying, like you can't. Like I have met some very some people that are very attractive and are just the most shallow people yes. you will ever meet in your life. Like they don't have no goals. They don't have no standards. All they like they want those girls that look like Nicki Minaj and Beyonce and all that stuff. And I'm just like, nobody really looks like that. Like, do you know how much stuff you have to go through to really look like that? No one looks like that. So, um, that's what I got. I got you. We got yeah, inner, you. Inner beauty is definitely the most important draw when yes. you're looking for for a mate. I, I feel like. I mean. At the very core of it, at the very foundation, like, being human and genuine is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. 
like to put very simple if you see a human you know doing a, a act of kindness or showing appreciation for something like that's beautiful like you stop and you admire and you appreciate that and like that in that moment you don't say you know what clothes they're wearing or you know what do they look like you're admiring the fact that they're being human and they're being kind and they're being you know thoughtful towards something other than themselves and i don't know for me that's that's like kind of a um, a standard of beauty that's kind of overlooked and not really portrayed in me. That's very important. That's what's on the inside. What's on the heart. And I always say, like, if somebody can't hold me down in the spirit, like, I'm talking about friends, I'm talking about people that potentially want to date me. If you can't pray for me, what are we friends for? What, what do you want to be my man for? And I think that spirit piece is something I really had to work on. It's like, Am I in tune with God? Am I in tune with the spirit realm? And am I able to hand that out to other people? See, that's cool because I think it's different for each person. Um, like me, I need somebody who's like passionate. I need somebody who knows what they want to do in life and will attack it no matter what. Because um, like for, for me, <laughs> for me, like that's what I want. I want somebody who is different from myself but still like myself where I'm willing to, you know, go attack the world. So. Okay. We touched a little bit, Chelsea, you in particular, about, you know, the media sets out these standards of beauties through our entertainers like Nicki Minaj and Beyonce and India Love and so on and so forth and the Kardashians. So in your own opinions, what are your opinions for those who do go out and get that plastic surgery? In particular, the celebrities, because, you know, we rave about, about them doing it the most. We see them doing it the most. So what are your views and opinions? Love you. At the very essence of who you are, I love you. Because when all that stuff fades away, because it will, the silicone will drop, the implants will deflate, the weave will dry up, your edge is going to get jacked up. You have to, it's going to thin out. You have to love you, but it's sad because I don't blame no celebrities. I blame the, the standards of what we feel like a woman has to be because if she didn't feel like she has to be like that, we wouldn't see that. Mm -hmm. Man, you just want to do that. Then. But you, I was going to say, because like but. if you... If you feel like that'll make you happy going and uh, getting all the surgeries and the stuff and the extension and whatever, if you feel like that's going to make you a better human, by all means, I think, go ahead. I think it's it's like that threshold that if you're doing it for somebody else, then that's like sort of where it's like the gray area or that's sort of like where it's frowned upon. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it for yourself, then, you know, be you, do your thing. But exactly. if you're doing it because, you know, Nicki Minaj did it or mm -hmm. because you know that the guy who you're looking at, he, he don't look at you for that, then I don't really agree with that. That's what I'm Okay. Well, unfortunately, we are all out of time. <laughs> but this was such a wonderful conversation, I must say so myself. But before we go to break, I have a tease for the bees. Which travels faster, hot or cold? Tell us your answers on Instagram and Twitter at The Social Bee Show and tag it with hashtag Tease for the Bees. When we return, it'll be a showdown for the crowd. Stay tuned. Today we have our panel of guests who really know how to define beauty. So it's time to play Secrets of the High. Are you guys ready? Yeah, ready. You got those juicy secrets. So on my nice little bubble of bees here, I have the starters of secrets. Just read it and give us your secret. It's really easy peasy, simple, none to it, but to do it. You ready? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let them begin. <laughs> What was your most embarrassing moment? Well, I've had several, but I'll talk about like a couple of semesters ago. It was like really rainy and slushy and snowy, and I was like running out trying to be cute in my boots, and I flipped down. You know the part in front of the Bernhard Center where the bus is? I was trying to run, flipped all the way down the hill. You flipped on the hill. Oh. All the way down the hill. And you scuffed in mud. And, and when I got back up, whole pants was muddy. And you still got on the bus? Still got on the bus. They helped me. And I was glad nobody had that Snapchat. I was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? 
Damn. I'm talking about I flipped down. I didn't do a tumble. I flipped down that hill. But you got back up. I was like, did, you did a tumble. Did a Beyonce got back up like. Oh my god! No, you were embarrassed. You were so the way you look, you really look like you're right. You so <laughs> so right. Like, okay, it was an embarrassing uh-huh. moment. This mud is a fashion statement. <laughs> right. What fleek mud on fleek? <laughs> in front of the burn heart <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> that was like social suicide. That started a like, training. You know what? Like no, 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 Do you? Bye, Felicia. You could feel Felicia. No. <laughs> you could feel Felicia. Felicia? No. Watermelon um, Felicia. What? Please. Social Bisha. <laughs> what? Okay. I don't know. Okay. Um. Probably. You've never probably. thought about changing your name? No. Oh, I never thought about what you could be. This is not one of her secrets. Be like. <laughs> Gretchen. <laughs> that is so 1972. That, that beauty is in the eye of the Gretchen. 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 Gretchen.
before I even welcomed everybody to the beehive, um, I left a little tease for my bees. You guys remember that? Who did? I did. Who did? I did. Are you ready for it? Do we even remember the question? No, that was What's mine. What, fly? what travels faster, oh. hot or cold? All right, Billy. Oh, okay. Hot or travels faster. You say hot. Anybody say cold? I say it's a trick question. You say it's a trick question. <laughs> Where is it traveling to? It, it is a tease for the bees. In the travel, is it faster? I, I feel like it's a trick question. You feel like it's a trick question. Oh, so we got two for hot, one for trick question. I'm going with science, hot. <laughs> and you're going with hot. Yeah. Drum roll, please. So the answer is hot travels faster. Yay. Because you always catch a cold. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, this is <laughs> Thanks to all who played, <laughs> tweeted, and Instagrammed us at The Social Bee Show. We would like to thank our guests for joining us tonight. But before we can go, be sure to tune in next Tuesday at 8 p.m. for The Social Bee Show. And always remember, be honest, be humble, be you. I'm your host, Sydney B. Have a great week. Come on, busy. Who's the bad guy?